Hampshire's native sports talk son. He's Nick Anastas on Sports Radio WGAM, The Game. Welcome back inside the Nick and Asta Show on Sports Radio WGAM The Game. Online on WGAMTheGame.com and of course on Twitter at WGAM The Game. 603 883 9900 is the phone number. And now it is time for the St. Anselm Coaches Show. We do it each and every Tuesday at 12 30. Head football coach Pat Murphy joining us on the telephone for the third consecutive week. Coach Murphy, thanks a bunch for taking the time. How are you? Good. Yourself, Nick? Not too bad, Coach. Uh, 24-14, the final last weekend down in Worcester, Mass. Assumption comes back to down St. A's by scoring the final 14 points in the fourth quarter. What should the headline have been? Uh, it's 24-14. We didn't make the plays. Um, bottom line is, you know, they're a good uh, upperclassman-laden team, and uh, we gave them too many opportunities to come back, and that's what good teams do. They come back at you, and, and we're not quite there um, maturity-wise to close teams out like that. Coach Pat Murphy, head coach of the St. Anselm football team, joining us on the St. A's Coaches Show as part of the Nick and Asda Show. Now, Coach, you must have seen improvement, however, especially offensively, I would think, uh, when you compare these two games, the assumption loss and the week one loss at Cutstown, you had 16 first downs, you put up 14 points, a couple of touchdowns for your tailback, Keith Charles. What else went right in this football game? Uh, I, I still think we played uh, poorly on the offensive side of the ball. I think uh, defensively, we really carried the day um, as far as um, the bulk of the game. Um, we went ahead by one uh, with uh, with about six minutes to go in the game, uh, and unfortunately the defense uh, led up a 75-yard drive. Uh, but other than that, the last three points of the game were scored by assumption because we went forward on fourth down with, with about three minutes to go, and we didn't get it. We turned the ball over in our field position. But I think defensively, other than that one drive, we played well all night. Um, our special teams have, have been very consistent through the first two games. Our offense really has got to pick it up. And uh, as the guy running the offense, I take full full responsibility for that. We've got to do a much better job offensively. Uh, those numbers you just described were ex- are an extremely bad day for us at the office from an offensive perspective based on what we've done the, the first couple of years here. And uh, we need to improve offensively. What's number one on the fix-it list? You know, I, I think number one is, uh, as always, is is just being sound up front on the offensive line. Uh, I think they did a, a, a good job of that overall for the day, uh, offensive line wise. But I think uh, there was some critical uh, points of the day where we had our protection or uh, blocking schemes break down. Uh, and then the next thing is that we need to be more consistent at the quarterback position and decision making. Um, you know, I think uh, we got two guys that are getting, you know, really the first taste of action at the college level uh, in Stephen Cupa and Ray Doucette, and they're both uh, both at times brilliant and both at times look like uh, first, first-year first players. We're speaking with Pat Murphy, head football coach for the St. A's Hawks, part of the St. Anthem Coaches Show here on the Nick and Astis Show. Coach, you touched on the quarterbacks a little bit there. Uh, Cupa and Doucette, second straight week, they kind of split time. Uh, Cupa 16 of 20, pretty good completion percentage there, 119 yards, no touchdowns, no turnovers. And Ray Doucette, 9 of 14, 88 yards. Any of these guys have a leg up on one another, or is the plan moving forward to continue to split the reps? I I, I... I want to say yes, but uh, right now that's what we're hoping for is one of them to step up and, and make those plays those, those, in those critical situations and really separate themselves. Right now they're kind of going neck and neck, uh, which is why we have the system set up as is. Uh, I'd much rather you know have a one quarterback deal and, and uh, have a set back up if, if, uh, if there's an injury or something like that occurs. But right now neither has separated themselves to the point where I can say, all right, he's the guy. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's the old adage, uh, you know, the good news is we got two quarterbacks playing. The bad news is we got two quarterbacks playing. 
<laughs> it's a good way of putting it, Coach. This is the Nick and Asta Show. It's the St. Anselm Coaches Show. It's part of the Nick and Asta Show here on Sports Radio WGAM, the game. St. A's Hawks head football coach Pat Murphy joining us on the telephone. Uh, Eric Fian had a pretty good game. Ten catches, 91 yards. He's a guy who kind of came out of nowhere last year, ended up as the second leading receiver on the squad, and looked like he turned in another pretty good performance in the loss against Assumption as well. Yeah, absolutely. Eric Eric's done a great job, and he's a New Hampshire guy, and uh, you know he's very consistent. We talk to our guys constantly about that level being being at that level of uh, consistency and and coming out knowing what we're going to get from him and giving it to us every single day. You know, when when players do that, we can build a game ra- game plan around those guys, and and Fian's one of those guys that we point to to say, hey, listen. Uh, he he's not the fastest guy around, but you know he comes out. He works hard. He he works at his craft, and we can build a game plan around him. And he did an excellent job last uh, last week. He's a Bedford native, and he'll actually be joining us in just a few minutes here on the Saint Anselm Coaches Show. Uh, the ground game coach alluded to it a little bit earlier, but it seems like Keith Charles had a had a productive day. Thirteen carries, seventy six yards, a clip of just. Under six yards per carry. Also found the end zone twice. He has now all three touchdowns for the Hawks on the season. How has he developed now in year three with the San A's Hawks? Sure. I, you know, Keith has done an excellent job. He's a junior captain for us. Uh, hard worker. Again, the level of consistency is very high. Um, is a strong individual. Works hard in the weight room. Uh, what he's really worked hard at doing is uh, becoming a better blocker. He's an exceptional athlete, was a very good basketball player in high school, good football player, obviously, uh, has uh, very soft hands. We've thrown the ball to him quite a bit out of the backfield, uh, both last week and uh, in years past, and uh, does an excellent job in all those areas with the ball. And where he's really improved is, is getting stronger in the weight room and become a much more physical blocker. Um, and he, he's got the speed. He, he could be one of the best backs in the league, and uh, he's someone that we count on daily. Coach Pat Murphy, head football coach for the St. A's Hawks, joining us on the St. Anselm Coaches Show as part of the Nick and Asta Show here on Sports Radio WGAM. The game will speak with Eric Feehan coming up as well uh, in just a few minutes as part of the St. A's Coaches Show. Coach, were you pleased with the way your team was able to put the Cutstown loss behind them and just go out and play competitive football in Week 2? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we know – what type of team Cutstown is? They're they're gonna they're a nationally ranked team. Um, they're very very strong, and we came out and I feel played a, a, a solid game, if not stellar game offensively, but a solid game, particularly in the other two phases of of, of the of the game uh, against what I feel is a very good assumption program. Uh, they're a junior seed and later gr- laden group, uh, both sides of the ball, particularly on the offensive and defensive lines. I think they're as strong or stronger than just about anyone in the league in those areas. Um, and we competed um, for the better part of four quarters. And, and um, you know, I think as long as we come out, go about our business the same way the rest of the year the winds will come and it's just a, it's a part of the process of, you know taking a look at that as opposed to the final results as long as our players mind the process and understand what it takes to be successful we'll be fine coach chris bent your senior linebacker had nine tackles in this game to lead the way uh he's from drake which is where you coached uh, for a while as well. Did did you did you have him first of all at Drake at High? Yes, I did. He was he played for me for for my last three years there. And all of a sudden now he's emerging as one of the better I think linebackers in the league. At least he's gotten off to a good start. Uh, nine tackles, seven of those solo. By the way, also had one for a loss. Uh, talk a little bit about his development since you've now had him under your wing for sure. what close to seven years, I guess. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Chris. Chris is a, a, again. Uh, I talk, you, you, it sounds like a broken record, but uh, consistent. Um, we know what we're going to get from Chris. He's very instinctive. He understands the game. Uh, he diagnoses plays quickly. Um, he's not going to wow you in the weight room, but he's a very good athlete. Uh, again, former basketball player, former high jumper on the track team at Drake as well, believe it or not, and uh, is a good athlete. 
And uh, on top of that, he's a physically tough individual, mentally tough individual. And we've built the defense in part around him being in, at the Mike Backer position. And he's done an excellent job the first two weeks. Coach Pat Murphy joining us on the St. A's Coaches Show as part of the Nick and Astis Show. St. A's getting ready for their home opener Friday night against Stonehill. It's the Battle of the Old Bronze Hawks. Now, what do we know about Stonehill, Coach? Stonehill uh, just came off what's got to be one of the, the biggest wins in, in that school history. The third, they had a shutout, 13 to nothing against a very good Southern Connecticut squad who's year in, year out, one of the better programs in the league. Um, you know, Prior to that, they, they played a tough Bloomsburg squad and, and, uh, to start the year. Very solid defensively. Um, they're not going to beat themselves. They're, they're a defensive-oriented team. Uh, so we have our, our work cut out for us from an offensive perspective. Um, you know, as far as our defense is concerned, they're going to get under center. They're going to run some some stretch. They're going to run some split zone. And they're going to run play action and try to throw the ball over the top. Um, you know, they're a good, solid ball club. And, uh, they, like I said, they're not going to beat themselves, you know, most days. That being said, are there any new wrinkles you plan to introduce in practice? Any additions to the playbook, either offensively or defensively, this week? Uh, yeah, I think every week we'll have you know one or two little wrinkles based on our opponent, and uh, that's something that you know it comes with every week's game plan. But uh, ultimately, you know, we've got to be sound in what we do. We've got to, you know, continue to follow the plan we have in place, and as long as we do that, and again. Uh, attack the process and not worry about the end result, you know, we'll get the result we want. Coach Pat Murphy joining us on the St. A's Coaches Show here on the Nick and Astis Show, Sports Radio WGAM, the game. Coach, can you give me three keys, three necessities for your team to come away with their first win of the season Friday night? Yeah, I think we have to make, you know, good decisions, not necessarily great decisions at the quarterback position. Uh, We have to tackle, and we've got to protect the football. It's that simple. It it's u- that simple. I guess it usually is, huh, Coach, when it comes down to it. Exactly right. Coach Pat Murphy, thanks a bunch for joining us. We appreciate it. And, of course, best of luck on Friday night. Home opener, 7 o'clock, up there on the hilltop against Stonehill. Should be a good one at 7 o'clock. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. That's Coach Pat Murphy joining us on the St. A's Coaches Show here on the Nick and Astis Show at Sports Radio WGAM. The game, again, that game, 7 o'clock Friday night. It's the home opener for the Hawks 0-2, looking even up their conference record with a win over their rivals, Stonehill. And that's not see the Hawks for a while at home after that. A couple of road games at New Haven, at Southern Connecticut before returning back to Goffstown. Or I guess it's technically Manchester. The campus is right on the on the border. They'll play Bentley on October 6th at home. So uh, if you can head out, go up on the hilltop, Friday night, 7 o'clock, should be a fist fight under the lights as Stonehill and St. A's get together for a 7 o'clock rumble. Coming up. Well, the wide receiver, Eric Feehan, a Bedford native. Two of us have something in common. He'll join the show next. It's part of the St. Ansem Coaches Show here on the Nick and Asta Show on Sports Radio, WGAM The Game. In the nation, we can't make traffic jams or love handles. Dis- GAM, New Hampshire Sports Center. UNH Wildcats football team dropped four slots to number 18 in the FCS after being trounced by the Minnesota Golden Gophers last weekend. The Cats, who are now 1-1 and on the season, will face Central Connecticut State University this Saturday in their homecoming game. The Boston Red Sox have lost four straight games and 11 out of their last 12. Tonight, they'll welcome in the New York Yankees for a three-game set with John Lester on the mound for the Sox going against Hiroki Kuroda, who's 13-10 and with a 3.14 ERA. You can catch all of the action starting with the 6.25 pregame coverage all right here on WGAM The Game. The New England Patriots have the day off as they start preparations for week two of the season. Though the team beat the Titans by 21 points last weekend, Rob Ninkovich knows you can't sit back and relax. Having a solid performance obviously, you're always trying to improve and throughout the year, you kind of want to steamroll into the end of the year and continue to improve. So I think that this is a good first game for us, definitely. The team will be back to practice tomorrow, preparing to take on the Arizona Cardinals this Sunday afternoon at Gillette Stadium. After walking Walking out on an appeals hearing.
hearing last month with Roger Goodell, Jonathan Vilma is now willing to meet with the NFL commissioner to discuss being reinstated. And Tyler Sagan has a new six-year extension. He signed with the Boston Bruins at $5.75 million per season. I'm Justin Bastinelli. This Sports Center is brought to you by Bud Light, the proud sponsor of Boston Red Sox baseball. Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Get your head off the desk, get back to work, but don't work too hard. Here's more killer sports talk, courtesy of the Nick Anasta Show on Sports Radio, WGAM, The Game. All right, welcome back inside the Nick Anasta Show. I am Nick Anastas. Nick Montecalvo is behind the board. Hour number one continuing to roll along. It's Tuesday, which means it's the St. A's Coaches Show. We just heard from the head football coach himself, Mr. Pat Murphy. Not too pleased with how the offense performed in a 24-14 fourth quarter loss at Assumption, dropping the Hawks to 0-2. Home opener coming up, of course, Friday night. They'll take on Stonehill. Coach was pretty pretty pleased, however, with the play of one particular junior wide receiver by the name of Eric Fian, who joins us now on the telephone. Eric, what's up, Brian? Thanks for uh, joining us here on the Nick and Astis Show. Thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, nine catches, pretty impressive in the loss, 91 yards, or make it 10 catches for 91 yards, long of 19. What was working well for you on uh, last week's game against Assumption? Um, it was just the uh, kind of coverage that Assumption ran was a uh, cover four when and it's a, more of a softer defense to make sure they don't give up big plays. So um, the quarterbacks and I just worked um, simple short routes to just keep the ball moving. You had over 500 yards last year as a sophomore, really emerged as the season went on. What helped you to bridge the time off between the end of last year and this year so that you can hit the ground running as you have so far through the first two weeks? Um, a lot of it was working with coaches during the offseason, um, getting myself prepared for the season, like really just getting used to playing college football at uh, this level, just making sure I'm staying and getting bigger, getting stronger and faster, and understanding um, – having a better football mind for uh, understanding what I need to do on the field. Eric Fian, junior wide receiver for the St. Anselm Hawks, joining us on the St. A's Coaches Show, part of the Nick Anasta Show here on Sports Radio WGA and the game. You mentioned the coaches. How about Zach Dixon, first season with the staff? He's the wide receiver coach slash director of football operations. How big of a role has he played in your development? He's been playing a very large role this season. Um, It was a very late hire for us. um, He's come on. He learned the offense very quickly, and he's been able to really help um, the receivers um, get a better grasp of the offense and giving us good uh, tips to uh, get ourselves open and uh, just to play better overall. Now, as you mentioned, some of this development, I guess, is natural. The longer you do anything, really, in life, the better you're going to get at it, and that includes playing football at this level. But what are some other specifics, some tweaks that you've added to your game to make yourself better? Uh, It's mostly just been uh, physically just getting stronger and um, working, uh, running routes. It's... it's, um, it's amazing that at this level it's just more just being precise than it is like athletic. It's you have to make sure you're running the right routes at the right time so that the quarterback can get uh, you the ball in the certain in certain holes. I'd imagine footwork's a big part of that, right? Yes, it is. If, if everything starts with the feet. If you have bad footwork, you're not, uh, you can't get off the line when uh, defensive backs come and play press on you and. Um, you can't break any tackles without your feet under you. Are there any particular drills that focus on fo- on footwork? Um, we do when we uh, do individual drills with our receiver coach. We do multiple footwork drills just uh, to get used to like, getting out of our stances, um, working cuts and working breaks out of routes to uh, make sure we always have our feet under us and to move quicker. Wide receiver Eric Fian joining us on the St. A's Coaches Show, part of the Nick Anastas Show here on Sports Radio WGAM, the game. Eric led the team in receiving in the 24-14 loss at Assumption. 10 catches, 91 yards, comes off a sophomore campaign with over 560 receiving yards. Also three touchdowns in 2011. Uh, Eric, 
You're a Bedford guy. So am I, by the way. You played high school ball at Bishop Brady. What kind of a what kind of a high school program do they have over there at Brady? Um, Brady, when I was when I attended, uh, they had a, we had a pretty good uh, pro football program. Um, two years that I was there, we made the state championship game. Uh, won it my freshman year, and we lost my senior year. Um, and we were competitive uh, all four years I was there. Um, Coach uh, Greg Roberts uh, runs a very good program. Uh, they've slowed down in recent years just due to the lack of numbers at the school, but um, they run a very good program. Co- uh, wide receiver Eric Fian joining us on the San A's Coaches Show here on Sports Radio WGAM The Game. I'm Nick Anastas. Uh, Eric, what, what do we know about Stonehill, the next opponent in the home opener? Coach says they're pretty disciplined over there on both sides of the ball. What are you going to be focusing on Friday night? Um, just going over the game plan, they run a very similar defense to our defense and that we see a lot in practice. So we have an idea of what uh, what plays will work against them, and we're going to try and just execute those plays to the best of our ability. Is the place going to be packed or what? I I hope so. I think it's, uh, <laughs> a lot of students, I think, are going to come out, and it's going to be, um, I think, one of our first night games ever at St. A's. So I, um, a lot of students are excited to come and see the game under the lights. Yeah, I've certainly never seen a game under the lights at St. A's. Uh, not that I remember. And I've been in and out of there for, well, over 10 years at this point. So something a little special, I suppose, about that, uh, for sure. Number two, how excited does the team get? To play at home, particularly in the home opener, uh, we're, we're definitely very excited. Um, it's been we've had two weeks away um, to Pennsylvania, which was a very long trip, and then down to Worcester at Assumption, and we're looking forward to be able to play in front of our fans and to be at home and just be able to defend our home turf. Yeah, and then you guys get right back on the road again for a couple back to back. I believe down in Connecticut before. Uh, the second home game on October 6th against Bentley. So a lot of traveling. That's 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 a pretty brutal schedule early on. Yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been interesting uh, with travel and the away games. But it'll be nice later in the year to have a bunch of home games to finish up the season. Coach said that he was proud of the way you guys responded, or more accurately, was proud of the way you were able to put the lopsided loss in the season opener at Cutstown behind you and go out and play competitive football against Assumption in which you held the lead until about six minutes or so to go in the football game. How difficult was it for the team to put a 58-6 to loss in the rearview mirror, refocus against Assumption? It was tough, but our coaches really – Focused in on let it uh, let the that game hurt for a day, but then you have to move on, and you can't let another loss um, impact the next game. Because if you let that one impact you, you're going to lose the next one just because of thinking about what you could have done in the last game. So we all just moved on. We knew we had played a very bad game, and we wanted to show that we were much better than that. What do you think you guys did better in week number two? Oh, I know the defense played very well until the very late in the game, and they still they I thought they had a very good game. Um, the offense we had a little bit more of a flow in like going through assumption. We were able to move the ball better, and we were able to score. But uh, we still need work on the offense just to be more consistent and to really put on more points like we know we're capable of doing. Let me ask you this, Eric, before I let you go, as we speak with Eric Fian wide receiver for the St. Ansem Hawks. And this is kind of a unique question because you're a wide receiver and because you've had two quarterbacks throwing you the football, Stephen Cupa and Ray Doucette. What's the difference between those two? Um, the difference, it's, um, it's really not too much of it. They're, they're very similar quarterbacks. The really only thing is a little different um, signals, that, like the way they have their cadences. Um but they throw both very throw very good balls. They are very like they're very intelligent, and they are both capable of uh, making very good reads. Um, but there isn't really too much of a difference that is, is noticeable. Eric, I appreciate the time, buddy. Good luck on Friday night. Thank you very much. That's Eric Fian, St. A's junior wide receiver, joining us on the St. Anselm 
Coaches Show here on the Nick and Astis Show, Sports Radio WG and the Game. Nick and Astis and Nick Bonicalvo cooling out here on September 11th. And we look forward to the game Friday night, of course, as St. A's returns at home for the season opener. I guess it uh, begs the question, did uh, St. Anselm's make the assumption that they were going to beat the team last week? I would hope not. And it doesn't sound like that to answer your pun-filled question. Uh, it seems like they were they were focused on the task at hand, but as assumption to their credit, able to come back, score the go-ahead touchdown with just four minutes, 20 seconds remaining. They had added a field goal late as well with about a minute to go to capture a 24-14 lead. St. A's 0-2, despite the fact they played much better in Week 2 as compared to the blowout loss it cuts down in Week 1. Yeah, and it seems like the team seems pretty focused. The coach sound pretty focused. Coach mm. Murphy sound pretty focused. Just uh, um, the player sounds pretty focused. So, I mean, everybody's better, focused. Yeah, everybody's focused. Everybody's ready for next week. No assuming. No assuming. No, no assumptions. Assuming, no assumptions. <laughs> <laughs> the Battle of the Old Bronze Hawk as well. They give out a, a little Hawk trophy to the winner of the annual matchup between St. A's and Stonehill. Good stuff under the lights Friday night. We thank Coach Pat Murphy and wide receiver Eric Fian for joining us on the Nick and Ask This Show. Coming up, we're going to talk to a two-time heavyweight champ, John Ruiz, the quiet man. Coming up next, part of the 11th annual Fight to Educate event being held next week at the Verizon Wireless Arena in the Queen City. We'll get into that a little bit as well with John. That is next as the show continues to roll on. It's the Nick and Ask This Show, and you know it's on Sports Radio, WGAM The Game. Hey, man, it's lunchtime.